G'day, I'm Matt, this is The Right Car, and you are with me today with the new Hyundai Ioniq 5. Well, it might not look new because not much has changed on the outside, but this is the 2023 update, and there have been plenty of changes underneath the skin. And this is the new top spec model. It's called the Epic, and it's got more power and torque, just like all the other models in the range, and a higher price too. Stay tuned, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you are enjoying what you're seeing so far. Please do hit like and subscribe if you are, and let me know what other EVs you want me to review. I'd love to see what I can do for you. Thanks. The 2023 Ionic 5 range now starts over $70,000 for the rear wheel drive entry level model, which is called Dynamic. It's had a new name and so have the rest of the models in the range. The next step up is called the Technic and it is all wheel drive only and it costs a fair few thousand dollars more. And then you've got this one, which is the bells and whistles version for now. It's called the Epic. Pretty good name for it, I reckon. That's E-P-I-Q, they all end in I-Q. And this one you can separate from the exterior by the fact that it comes with these digital rear view mirrors. So they basically project onto little screens inside the car and they show you a view through a camera rather than through a mirror. Just hate to think what happens if they break uh, or if someone sideswipes you and knocks one off. What's that going to cost to repair? Anyway, you can also tell it because it's got a panoramic roof and it can also pre-prime the battery for faster charging when you get to a charging station. There's plenty of other tech stuff that you can read about. There's a good story at Car Expert if you want to go and hit that link and it tells you all the details about each of the variants. And I'm also going to do a review for Car Expert on this grade, so make sure you have a read of it. There are some pretty obvious alternatives to this car when it comes to EV SUVs. I don't really think of this as an SUV. I think of it as a big hatchback. Uh, but then again, I also think of the Tesla Model Y as a bit of a big hatchback too, even though it is an SUV. But it's a really great alternative to this. It's cheaper and it's roomier and arguably it's probably a lot better value. So yeah, if you are focused on value and you actually wanna be able to get one of these cars because getting an Ionic 5 could actually be a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah, Tesla Model Y could be the best alternative, I think. And then there's the Kia EV6, which is also a fantastic electric SUV. Uh, again, more like a hatchback, but it's a fantastic car. It goes really well. It's got really nice driving dynamics and really roomy too. Pricing is about on par with this car, maybe a little bit less, unless you want the GT version, which is the really fast one. It's really good. Review coming soon. Like I said, I think of this as more of a big hatchback than an SUV because it doesn't really have SUV ride height and it isn't really that big. It's 4.6 and a bit meters long, so it is larger than a regular hatchback, but it's not huge. It's 1.9 meters wide, 1.6 meters tall, so it's not necessarily imposing. It just looks a bit bigger than it actually is. Um, I'll show you the back seat soon, but I first want to show you the boot, namely not just those lights, but they are fantastic. They make this car stand out in traffic. So let's have a look in the boot. We're talking 527 litres of cargo capacity, which is definitely SUV-like in terms of the space available. Now under here, you've got an extra storage section. There is no spare tyre, as you'll see. There's only a tyre mobility kit, which is just something that you might want to keep in mind if you are buying this car, and particularly if you live in the country, it could be a buying consideration for you. But lots of EVs only have well, a tyre repair kit and no spare because it helps save weight, which improves driving range. So that might be something you need to also consider if you are looking at an EV. Now, there's a little parcel shelf cover here. Uh, the seats do fold down, but weirdly, unlike a lot of other cars, there are no remote releases in the back. So you actually have to schlep your way around here to the side and lower the seats like so. Then again, that's not that big of an ask. Anyway, we should check out in there. 
I remember when the Ionic 5 launched in Australia and everybody was just blown away by this massive dual screen layout and it's been mimicked so many times since this car launched that now it isn't as wow factor as it was but it is extremely usable this screen itself is high definition it's very easy to get used to and I love the fact that there are still buttons below you've got buttons for your stereo controls um, the climate controls are this touch sensitive screen here it's going to get a lot of dirty fingerprints on it I hate that but you know, brands persist with it. So they're obviously not listening to me. Now, the steering wheel is also an interesting talking point because it doesn't have a brand on it. It's just got the four dots, which is Hyundai's Ionic branding, if you ask them. So the dots are basically representative of the pixel headlights and tail lights, which they associate with their EV models. Weirdly though, the Hyundai Staria van has those pixel lights and they were like, yeah, whoops. We, we did the wrong thing there. Anyway, it is a very interesting cabin, but the most interesting part obviously is this thing here. This is another screen that tells you what's going on behind you. As I said, this is the Epic model, and so it gets those digital camera mirrors, mirrors, uh, and they do give you a view of what's going on behind you. I do find them a little bit difficult to get used to, and also, like I said, I fear what happens when someone accidentally knocks one off when you're parked in a, in a city suburb. Um, it could be a real problem. Now, in terms of storage in the front seat, there's heaps. Um, you've got this amazing open center storage section here, a uh, little covered section here, a couple of cup holders, a wireless charger down here, some USB ports, another USB port down there to connect to the screen. And also you've got this glove box, like a drawer glove box, which is really, really neat. This seat also can be set up for reclining if you are charging, so you can basically lay back and have a look at the stars because that panoramic roof is something to behold. Another thing I just found it a little bit hard to get to terms with is the gear selector um, phallus, I guess you'd call it. It's a stalk that sticks out off the steering column you have to twist it forwards to go into drive and backwards to go into reverse. Now that's the opposite of what you would typically do if you were driving an automatic car. You go down to go into drive and up to go into reverse when you're parking, for instance. So that can take some getting used to, but you do get used to it. All right, let's check out the back seat. Back seat space in the Ionic 5 is exceptional. There's plenty of room for someone my size back here. I'm six foot, 182 centimeters. This seat is set for me. Heaps, heaps of foot room. Well, could do with a little bit more foot room. Headroom's great. Panoramic roof is fantastic. Kids are gonna love it back here. There's just so much sky to see above you. And in fact, there are isofix points on both window seats. There's also three top tether points. The outboard seats in this car also have heating, which is nice. There's little buttons on the doors and kid-friendly features like a little sunshade on the window on both sides, which is nice. There's USB charging. There's also rear seat air vents in the pillars. So they're a little bit higher and they actually get to the little children's faces a bit better. My little girl was in this spot and she thought that it was a bit better than usual in here because mainly the view, I think. There's also a pair of cup holders and this flip down armrest and little mesh mat pockets with hard kickable back plates on the seats. Yeah, nice back here. Under the bonnet of the Ionic 5, you've got a massive storage section. Well, it's not massive, but it is big enough to store your cables. Underneath there is the electric motor. You've got a few other things in the area here. So that's where you fill up your washer fluid. Don't touch those. And there's the 12 volt battery as well. There have been power and torque improvements for both versions. The rear wheel drive numbers are on your screen now. They are pretty good. They're not huge. So it's not the fastest version of this car that you can get. If you buy the all wheel drive, you get a lot more power and torque, more than 600 Newton meters of torque, which is quite a lot. Now, not to 100, you'll see that on your screen now as well. And that is very quick, but there's an even faster one coming. As I said, the Ionic 5N is going to be blisteringly fast. Now, when it comes to the battery pack, it's now about five kilowatt hours larger. So 77.4 kilowatt hours for the battery pack that lies underneath the body of the car. And that means it's now got longer range. And you'll see the range figures for both the rear wheel drive and all wheel drive version on your screen. Now, do you reckon it's good enough? I reckon it is. 
Hyundai says it has updated the ride and handling tune for the 2023 and beyond Ionic 5 to offer a perfect balance between ride comfort and body control and that sort of thing. In the last version, it was a little bit um, soggy and sloppy at times, and that was just because it was quite softly tuned. But with this updated version, there's a bit more of a firm footed feel on the surface below, and it does definitely feel improved for the most part. If you drive over a road that does have some, uh, I guess, pock marks or unpleasant surface areas, then you might find that it is a little bit bumpy um, and the body doesn't feel quite as controlled as it could, but it is definitely an improvement on what it was. But it does still handle itself very well and the fact that it is all wheel drive just does give you a little bit of extra peace of mind, especially if the road's wet. And this all wheel drive model obviously gets the dual motors, so it's very quick. Very quick. You'll only use that acceleration in some situations. If you do use it a lot, you're gonna eat up your battery pretty fast. Um, and it does make a nice party trick to show your friends, but do it responsibly. Now I've already mentioned these digital mirrors a couple of times. I just wanna call out a few things about them, right? So they are a bit distracting, because they're sort of closer than your peripheral vision. And when you are trying to do, say, a reverse parallel park, I'll just do one for example here, put it into reverse, and it is a bit harder to judge the depth perception situation because um, it's just not a natural reflection. It's sort of like it's got lines to help you see where you're going, but they just aren't as accurate as a real mirror. Uh, I personally don't love them. You might though. Let's talk efficiency for the Ionic 5. And just remember, like a petrol or diesel car, the lower the number, the better. So if we're talking about the Ionic 5 rear wheel drive, the number is lower, 16.8 kilowatt hours per 100, or the all wheel drive is 19 kilowatt hours per 100 k's. Now that is still very efficient. A Polestar will do something in the region of 25 for the all wheel drive. Same with a Volvo EV. So 19 is very impressive. If you're wondering what I've seen during my time in this car, well, you'll see that figure on your screen now. And I was very impressed with that. Okay, let's talk about charging next. So if you go to a very fast 350 kilowatt charger, you should be able to get between 10 and 80% charge in just 18 minutes, according to Hyundai. And if that charger is 50 kilowatts, which is still a pretty quick charge, you should be able to do that same 10 to 80% charge in about 70 minutes. So yeah, spend an hour and 10 minutes, go get yourself a coffee, an ice cream, and relax and enjoy the sights if it's only 50 kilowatts. If you are considering buying one of these cars, do get a wall box for home so you can charge it when you are at home. Seven kilowatts is the typical speed that you'll be able to draw in terms of that's what you'll be able to add back to the battery in an hour. So you're looking at something in the region of 11 hours, 45 minutes to fill it up from empty. Still pretty good. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 managed the maximum five-star ANCAP safety rating against the 2021 criteria. So it's still got heaps of active safety tech included as standard, like autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist and junction detection, evasive steering assist, so it'll actually help you steer out of a potential problem. There's also lane keeping assistance, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and a 360 degree surround view camera on all variants, as well as front and rear parking sensors. So it does come very comprehensively equipped when it comes to tech. It's also got seven airbags, including dual front, front side, full length curtain, and a front center airbag. So if things go awry, you will be theoretically very safe in this car. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, just like every other Hyundai, but an eight year 160,000 K warranty for the battery pack. Now servicing intervals are much longer these days for the Ioniq 5, 
24 months and 30,000 kilometers, which is twice as lengthy as the existing service intervals. It just means you have to spend less time at a service center. You'll see the prices for the servicing costs on your screen now. There's also roadside assist included with every Hyundai for life if you make sure that you get your car serviced at Hyundai. And I'd recommend that. For me, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 is still one of the best EVs on the market, although I don't think I'd spring 85 grand for this epic version. I don't like those side mirrors and I don't need that sunroof, so I probably wouldn't bother spending the extra six or seven thousand dollars over the Technic all-wheel drive. That's the one I'd probably choose if I didn't need extra range. But tell me what you would choose in the comments section below. Would you choose an Ioniq 5 or something completely different? I'd love to know. Please do hit me up and I'll see you in the next one.